Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Remote Learning in Physics. As is usual, let's begin with retrieval practice. 1. Name a fuel used for nuclear fission. Number 2. Is the use of gamma rays for radiotherapy an example of irradiation or contamination? 3. How is an alpha particle represented in a nuclear equation? So the symbol there, AZX, is the way we write out nuclear equation symbols. Use that format to show me what an alpha particle looks like. And finally, what is spring constant K? What does that represent? Pause the video while you attempt the questions and play when you're ready to hear the answer. Looking at those answers, uh, uranium is usually used in nuclear fission power stations. Plutonium is acceptable. Gamma radiation is used to irradiate uh, the tumour. For an alpha particle, it is helium, which is 4,2. And the spring constant K represents a measure of the stiffness of a spring. It is, by the equation, the force needed for unit of extension. So K equals F divided by E, if you were expressing that using the Hooke's Law equation. Today we're going to look very briefly at nuclear fusion, looking at the conditions required for it, how it occurs, and we'll compare and contrast, or you will compare and contrast, with nuclear fission that we looked at in the previous lesson. So what is nuclear fusion? Well, simply put, it's when two light nuclei join to form a heavier one. And in this process, just as with nuclear fission, some of the mass is converted into the energy of radiation. And that's what it says on the spec. What does that actually mean? Well, let's take a look at the next couple of slides. And here's your definition slide. Again, it's the joining of two light nuclei to form a heavier nucleus. So in this example, we take two isotopes of the lightest uh, element, hydrogen. So this is deuterium on the left uh, with one proton and one neutron and tritium, which has one proton and two neutrons. Fuse them together, get some helium and energy is released and a neutron. Easy peasy? Not quite. Um, nuclei are positive particles. So as they approach each other, they try to repel because uh, they have the same charge. If you want fusion to happen, you have to overcome this repulsion. And to do that naturally, we need something like the sun. OK, so being in a hot gas or plasma and extremely high temperature. So you can see there in the sun, at least 150 uh, million degrees. So that's not something you can achieve very easily. Uh, so in nature, the high temperature and pressure that we need is only found in stars, such as our sun. We said energy was released. Um, the equation which governs this is Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. OK, so for each of the you know, fusion pathways and fusion reactions, there is always energy released. Now, at GCSE, you don't need to know that calculation or to work it out. It was on the old specification, but is no longer covered. At A level, you would look at it. But in general terms, it's the idea that each of these fusion reactions uh, there is a release of energy because the mass of the products and the mass of the reactants are not quite the same. And that conversion factor is done with E equals MC squared. OK, the same is true for nuclear fission. Again, the products are slightly lighter than the reactants. The difference in mass, a tiny, tiny difference in mass, accounts for a massive amount of energy. Uh, on Earth, the only way we can achieve nuclear fusion in uh, experimental conditions is with fusion reactors. Now these are very much prototypes at the moment. In fact, the, the joke uh, or the, the sad thing about it, since I was a child, um, they've always been about 30 years away. And that's simply because of the complexities of constructing such uh, a device. OK, so if you're trying to hold a fuel, um, this feels incredibly hot. Yeah, tiny amounts, but you'd have to, we have to use very powerful magnetic fields to make sure it doesn't touch the sides of the reactor. Otherwise, it would simply melt through and stop the reaction. It wouldn't cause a massive nuclear explosion or anything like that. It would simply stop the reaction and it just would not work. Um, so we either use very high powered lasers focused on a tiny piece of fuel 
or like here, uh, a very high, uh, highly powered magnetic field. And this is uh, ITER, one of the largest fusion reactor prototypes in the world. So as we said there, uh, fusing together different light nuclei to make heavier ones and the release of energy from that. Again, this is an example slightly beyond the course of the GCSE, but again, it shows that it's not just one reaction. There are a series of fusion reactions before you get to, on the right here, um, regular old helium. OK, so starting off with hydrogen one on the left, making heavier isotopes. And then those combining together to make helium. But again, at GCSE, the definition of light nuclei uh, joining together to make heavier ones is all that we need. So you could take some time now and compare and contrast uh, what happens in fission and fusion. Uh, sorry, that diagram is not an English diagram, so apologies for any language uh, quirks. Take some time, compare those two, make a list, make a table and set it out in your notes. Finally then, apply to demonstrate. A couple of questions for you to try. Answers, as always, at the end. So matching up the answers, fusion happens in stars. Chain reactions happen in a nuclear reactor, so it's nuclear fission and alpha decay happens in the nucleus of an atom. I think they're trying to catch you out there. A smoke precipitator is not a smoke uh, detector, different kind of device. Question two then, where does the process shown by this equation happen naturally? Well, of course it happens inside the sun. Part B, the process of joining two atomic nuclei to form a different one is called nuclear fusion. This releases energy. For question three, three marks explain what happens in the process of fusion. Light nuclei join to form a heavier nucleus, that's two marks. You could say hydrogen nuclei, and we could say a helium nucleus for the heavier. You can say what, exactly what they are if you wish to. If this is a four mark question, I would expect that we might have to give an example rather than the general term. And for the final mark, sum of the mass a very small amount, remember, is converted into energy, a very large amount of energy. And finally, uh, two advantages of fuel used in fusion reactors compared with that in fission. So using the data in the question, this would be an example of rather than an inherent knowledge of it. So taking information from the data, um, easy to obtain, available in large amounts, releases more energy per kilogram. As you can see from the table, the fusion one, uh, 10 to the 14 compared to 10 to the 13 joules. So a difference of a factor of 10 there per kilogram. And that's that. Thank you very much for this quick lesson. Um, remember, as always, to check out our other revision channels on Century, on Teams and on Seneca. Thank you, as always, for listening. And we will see you again next time.